Hi, my name is Anna, I'm 18. I've been vegan for four years and today I wanna to tell you about the healthiest way to eat because while I may not have any credentials like being a doctor or nutritionist or anything at all, I did graduate high school and I know how to make a smoothie bowl. And you know, in the past years, I've tried so many different things. I've done water fast, juice cleanses, 80-10-10, raw vegan, fruitarian, low carb, high fat, high carb, low fat, breatharian, Oh, sorry, you'll have to excuse me. I get a little out of breath. My naturopath told me I have adrenal fatigue, which isn't real, but I don't really care if it's supported by evidence or not. Anyways, today I'm obviously going to be talking about ex-vegans. You know, the past few months to kind of year, we've seen quite a... I think it's a small number, but it's like a controversial amount of YouTubers who are ones who begin to go back to eating animal products. Almost all of them for health reasons, and this can of course not happen without a major uproar from the aggressive militant vegans who don't have an understanding for basic human psychology and therefore think that shaming people in the comment sections of YouTube videos is somehow effective activism. The online community for veganism on YouTube has just come to a point where it's never been like this before. I mean, you look five years, five years ago, like Kenya pointed out, and it wasn't like this. And she, she was one of the first people to start making animal rights videos. It wasn't like this. But I feel like this has actually sparked a lot of really important conversation, which is why I personally believe these Why I'm No Longer Vegan videos are actually a really good thing. First of all, hopefully a lot of us have learned that the people you follow online are not always truthful with you. People who make money off of your perception of how healthy they eat, people who make money off of your perception of how good they feel, have many reasons to lie or mislead you regarding any health issues that they may be experiencing. And then we get to the point where the I'm no longer vegan video comes out and they say, oh, I've just been getting progressively worse and worse for years. I've been suffering. Well, really? Because if I'd known that, maybe I wouldn't have used your coupon code for Four Sigmatic or forced myself to stick to the sprouts, tahini, and zucchini noodle diet that you've been promoting for the last two years. If you eat an extremely restrictive diet, that is calorically and or nutritionally deficient, it's quite possible that you will eventually experience health problems as a result from not properly researching because you're more focused on purity than actual evidence for what a healthy diet looks like. Not one of them has sat down and made a video warning people not to make the same mistakes that they did in the way that they damaged their body with stupid restrictive vegan diets. Not one of them. They haven't spoken about the fact that pretty much all of them did a water fast or a juice cleanse for a prolonged period of time. They haven't spoken about the fact that they only ate fruit for the first two years of their vegan diet. They haven't spoken about the fact that they eliminated all overt fats and messed up their hormones. It's not a good idea for any of us, whether we have social media platforms or not, to lie to ourselves about how we feel and any health issues we may be experiencing because we don't want to admit to ourselves or to others that our diet is maybe not as healthy as we once thought or told people. Different bodies react differently to different foods. So if yours is reacting badly to a certain food or food group, it's best to not only try to limit or eliminate that food or food group from your diet, but to also maybe see a nutritionist or a doctor to try to figure out what could be causing that and to not just continually eat the same stuff you are and expect different results. Just because you feel good currently or have for months or years does not mean there are no underlying health problems present in your body. Many problems can go unnoticed for such a long time that they can go from just being a minor problem that could have been easily fixed to something really major or to actually lead to other health problems as well. Claiming that a vegan diet can cure anything is completely irresponsible and should not be done, especially if you haven't ever even studied nutrition. And you know, reading the conclusion sentence of a study published on PubMed does not make you a health expert. A vegan diet is not inherently healthy, nor is it inherently unhealthy. It's possible to eat a healthy vegan diet and it's possible to eat a very unhealthy vegan diet. The less people there are on social media who are promoting an unhealthy restrictive vegan diet, 
the less people who will go vegan trying to eat that same diet and experience the same health problems that they do, which lead them to go back to eating animal products. And the less people who are misled by them, the more people who are gonna come across the people who are promoting a healthy, balanced vegan diet. And therefore, more people are going to stay vegan instead of going vegan, eating very restrictively, not getting enough calories or nutrients, and then going back to eating animal products, and then telling everyone they know that the vegan diet didn't work for them. I personally don't have a problem with non-vegans, so this is not at all a hate video on people who are no longer vegan. I still think it's great that it seems like a lot of these people are eating high plant-based diets. I think that's awesome, and I'm always going to encourage reduction over this all or nothing mindset that a lot of vegans promote. Like, if you're not completely vegan, you're a terrible person, you're a murderer, you don't care about the animals. That's untrue and it's not helpful. It, it just doesn't do anything. It's obviously more ethical to eat a completely vegan diet, but also just because you're vegan doesn't mean you are living as ethical of a life as you can and you have nothing that you need to work on as well. So I don't really think it's productive to be hating on people for eating eggs once a day. But because of the things that I just listed, I do think it's really important for us to look at the experiences of these ex-vegans and so that we can learn from their mistakes. I found as many YouTube influencers as I could who went from once being vegan to no longer being vegan. I've definitely missed a few here and there, but I think for the most part, I have like the majority of the ones, or at least the ones who are most well known for their videos on why they're no longer vegan. And so I'm gonna kind of go through a little, hopefully quick for most of them, rundown on why they're no longer vegan, kind of compile um, everyone's experiences that they shared in their videos. I'll try my best to summarize everything as accurately as possible, but I might've made a few mistakes here and there. And so yeah, I'm gonna start at the earliest one that I could find. So let's go back to 2016 and take a little trip down memory lane. Just started off with like a little bit of um, barbecued fried pork rinds. A typical lunch would be 16 egg yolks, not the whites though. For dinner, I have like a, a beef chimichanga for dinner. So the YouTuber Sara went vegan because she was told by many of her friends that it would heal her stomach problems. She did lots of research to learn how to maintain a balanced plant-based diet, but her health got worse when going vegan and her doctor told her she was consuming too much fiber. So after two months of being vegan, she started eating animal products again and the problems got better. Now it doesn't seem like she showed anything on her channel about her being vegan before this video unless she deleted them. Um, but it doesn't really seem like her channel was like a vegan influencer channel or anything. So it's really hard to know what she did eat. This video isn't going to be me saying, oh, if she would have done this, it would have, you know, she would have been able to stay vegan and fix her problems. Cause I don't know anything about any of that kind of stuff. This is just kind of me compiling the information. So you can kind of see a pattern with a lot of them, especially the ones who were very predominant vegans online and shared a lot about that. And so the next person is Elle Taylor. Elle had had an eating disorder for quite a long time and eventually she decided she really wanted to actually get better. So she started looking into alternative ways of eating and found a high carb, low fat vegan diet, which helped her gain the little bit of weight that she needed to gain. But she was still very thin though, in my opinion. And I believe she followed Freely the Banana Girl and her advice. I do think she went to the Thai Fruit Festival, which is run by Freely and her ex-partner, uh, who we're not going to name in this video, just f out of compassion for ourselves. But I'm like 99% sure she followed Freely and she would make videos eating huge amounts of fruit and calories, you know, like 3,500 calories in some videos but it was also a very restrictive diet as far as what she did eat. She just didn't eat a whole lot of variety. It was lots of fruit, lots of mono meals of just like eating cantaloupe or just papayas. Many people felt that she still had disordered eating patterns, which had just gone from anorexia to orthorexia. I don't remember exactly why she stopped being vegan, um, if she ever made a video about it, more than just like saying she wasn't vegan anymore, it's now deleted. Um, but from what I remember, because I did 
know about her back in 2016. I think it really had to do with the fact that she really realized that her diet wasn't balanced and maybe she still did have problems with restrictive disordered eating and she had a lot of other struggles in her life that were going on around this time and I think she eventually realized it was best for her um, to no longer eat the way she was. You know, in my opinion, I really think it's not a good idea for people who are trying to overcome eating disorders to go vegan because it is restrictive by nature. You are limiting foods and it's just not a good idea for people who are still in that restrictive mindset to do that. I don't think orthorexia really is a thing. It's about people because they're overly healthy. Shouldn't we be healthy as a society? I mean, I really hope she's doing well. She hasn't posted it in two years, but I think it's for the best. But she used to make a lot of What I Eat In A Day videos and those I know really influenced people because I remember looking at her and thinking, wow, people can actually do that? That seems cool. I wanna be able to eat that much food. Um, luckily never got to that point, but. <laughs> Next up we have Nikocado Avocado at the end of 2016 made a video about why he was no longer going to be vegan. He was vegan for five years, followed the raw vegan diet to a T, he says, listened to health gurus and holistic doctors for three years, and at first, raw veganism was life-saving. I'm guessing he did raw veganism for around three years of those five years of being vegan, though I'm not sure because all of his videos prior to him making a video about him no longer wanting to be a vegan YouTuber anymore are not there, so I don't really remember what his diet looked like or what he ate. But eventually he started losing teeth, hair, and mental sanity. I went out and I bought sardines. I have never even had sardines in my entire life. <sighs> won't even focus. That's sardines. Now, it's basically Sebastian from The Little Mermaid. <laughs> I don't want to eat Sebastian. I'm going in circles. I'm going crazy. I don't know. I'm going crazy. He didn't feel good. His concentration and memory was worse. He went back to eating animal products for health and biology reasons, but now he's clearly not in like the healthiest physical state as you can see from his recent videos and likely not the healthiest mental state either which is unfortunate. I don't know if he's done water fast or juice cleanses but he seems like the kind of person who might have followed someone like Doug Graham in the past. He might have I think he went to like Woodstock Fruit Festival, but overall he ate a very restrictive vegan diet for quite a while. So in 2017, there's actually only two videos that I could find. The first is by Sarah's Day. I think I was vegan for like six months and I was raw vegan for three months. Which I'm guessing she means she was raw for three of those. And she went vegan to help with her skin issues. She had really bad hormonal acne and she was always feeling hungry. And so I think she had multiple friends who were vegan. They told her to eat more fat. Um, she also felt like she was always gonna be sick. She felt tired, lightheaded, lost muscle mass, was low in iron, felt weak. But she claims that she did it right, like went vegan the right way, read the 80-10-10 book. If you don't know what the 80-10-10 book is or what 80-10-10 is, it's a book by a guy named Doug Graham who we will talk about in this video because he's kind of a shady character who plays a role in some of these people's experiences. What 80-10-10 means or how he promotes it, he promotes it as the healthiest diet. This is the way that people are supposed to eat. 80% of your calories come from carbs, 10 from fat, 10 from protein. He talks about eating a high fruit diet, a very high raw diet. And so in my opinion and in most vegans' opinions, this is not the right way to do it. And unsurprisingly, she started to have cravings for tuna, eggs, yogurt, dairy. She ate meat one day and felt a rush of energy, felt better. Unsurprisingly, about a month later, a YouTuber named Tori Sterling made a video about why she was no longer vegan. Um, she had gone plant-based for health. I think she was vegan for around a year, over a year. She only ever did high carb, low fat though, it seems, and she felt great for the first nine months. Had a lot more energy, lost weight, never felt better, but then gradually she became more bloated all the time, felt sick a lot, didn't have a lot of energy, lost muscle. And then one day she decided to eat eggs and she started eating more veggies and less fruit and she didn't feel as bloated and felt a lot better. She's someone who likely 
followed Freely's advice or followed someone who followed Freely's advice because that's where like high carb, low fat was just really kind of stemming from at this time. What's interesting is that she actually posted a video five days before her Why I'm No Longer Vegan video called How to Cleanse and Detox Your Body with a Raw Vegan Diet. I know in my last vlog I was like, I never had more energy, all this stuff, but it was I was just sort of embarrassed to say. And in these two videos, she contradicts herself with what she's saying about how she's feeling, which is really interesting because I've found that a lot of people in this list are doing that. They're saying they feel one way, but then when they come out as not vegan, they're saying they felt a different way. A lot of the times when I was really struggling, I didn't show it. I didn't show it on here. I didn't, I put makeup on to cover, you know, my acne or I would film on days when my skin was good because I would go through a lot of like, you know, three days my skin would be horrible and then like, it would kind of clear up for two days and then it would be horrible again. And I would kind of only show when I was when it was okay or when it was bearable. I had so much protection over this vegan belief that I didn't want anyone who knew me well that wasn't vegan to think that this was a cause of the veganism. Now on to 2018, a YouTuber, Victoria X Brave, who didn't really ever talk about veganism on her channel, made a video why she was no longer vegan as she had been vegetarian since she was about nine years old. She did that for the animals and was vegan for a few years for health. She'd had a sensitive digestive system for her whole life. She can't really digest legumes that well, so that cuts off one protein source for her. And she really likes to work out and lift weights, so she needs a large amount of protein. She doesn't really talk about what she ate for like the entire few years that she was vegan, but one thing she does say is kind of alarming. Freely the banana girl. I don't know if you guys have heard of her, but I was like practicing what she taught and I was, I even only ate bananas for like an entire week. So she was a follower Freely, ate high carb, low fat. It's likely that, you know, we're starting to see that pattern. People eating high carb, low fat, not feeling good, you know, not really getting the results that they want health wise. Um, she does say that she knows you can get enough protein on a vegan diet though, but now she only eats honey and egg whites. So I still think that's great. Like I think we should be encouraging, like I said earlier, reduction is awesome. P somebody only eating egg whites and honey for non-vegan foods is still amazing. Next up we have Tana Mojo who never really, I don't think, made a video explaining why she is was no longer vegan. She had that subject in the title of one of, video, one of her videos, but I watched it and it didn't really explain anything. My best guess based on her personality is that she just didn't want to be vegan anymore. She wanted to be able to eat at like Taco Bell with her friends, but I also didn't want to watch like 20 different videos of hers to try to figure out if she talks about it in some other video. <laughs> so yeah, we're probably not gonna touch on her too much in this video since it's just hard to say. But she also didn't post what I eat in a day videos, so also don't know what she ate. A couple days later, Blair White, who was vegan for 10 years, talked about why she is no longer vegan. I had been vegan for almost a decade with almost no health issues. She also didn't make vegan related videos on her channel, um, so she wasn't like any kind of vegan influencer. But as for her story, she says she felt really good for the first few years. And after that, her health started to decline a bit. She got super pale, lethargic, couldn't get out of bed, would feel faint when getting up, had digestive issues, depression, and stomach aches after eating. And keep in mind, in being vegan, I actually ate, in my mind, very, very healthy. I ate almost all fruits and vegetables. I ate a variety of fruits and vegetables, lots of beans, nuts, rice, all that type of stuff. Um, so it's not like I was just eating junk food or something. I don't really know what that means. I don't know if she means she ate like a well-balanced whole foods diet or if she was eating like a high raw vegan diet, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, and then just some beans, nuts, and rice in there. She says after six months of those problems, so I'm guessing like it was in the last year of her being vegan that this is happening, uh, she got her blood checked. She was deficient in B12 and vitamin D, and I'm assuming around four others based on what she said. Her doctor told her to supplement for all of them or stop being vegan. She supplemented for everything for a while, but that got old because she also has to take six pills to regulate her hormones and she didn't want to destroy her liver. I'm not sure why she didn't just supplement short term and then focus on eating more foods that contain those things that she was locking in afterwards to make sure she was consistently getting enough of them. Because you know, when you're low in 
zinc, that doesn't mean you have to take a zinc supplement until the day you die. You take it to help get back to normal levels and then you include more zinc rich foods into your diet. Lexi Lombard was vegan for two and a half years and what's actually really surprising about her story is that she's one of the first people I've ever heard of go vegan for like environmental reasons. She lived in LA and so she was inspired to go vegan because of the LA drought and she started doing high carb low fat after a while of being vegan. I found the high carb low fat community and like th they're just they're these like skinny glowing <laughs> young beautiful women and men that are just eating fruit and eating huge amounts of it and they're losing weight and they're they're thriving, you know. The miracle claims got to me. I believed in every single one of them. So I went from being vegan to being high carb, low fat vegan. She was always thinking about food, eating so much, feeling so full, and would sometimes even throw up to relieve that feeling of being so full. And she even felt guilt over eating like fat or oil. Because of those things, I'm guessing she was probably a follower of Freely the Banana Girl. Those are things that Freely preached. Okay, you might gain weight if you've come from a past of restriction because you need to fix your metabolic damage. So I started to believe that I had come from a past of subconscious restriction even though that was like zero percent true. After a road trip across the country where she forgot to bring like a bunch of fruit and anything and had to eat a ton of junk food, she decided once she got to somebody's house to eat an egg. She says in her video that she's really grateful for veganism and I actually found her video to be one of the most genuine in my opinion. I mean I watched around like 20 of them. Next up we have somebody whose channel name is Vegetable Police, who I had actually never heard of until like two days ago. Um, this guy's real name is Casey, I believe, and he was vegan for 10 years. Uh, I apologize if I get any of his information incorrect. He kind of has like a satirical aspect to his channel. I'm n From the videos I watched, I was never really sure if what he was saying was satire or if it wasn't. But he was vegan 10 years, um, went vegan to try to heal ulcerative colitis. It says in his channel description that a raw vegan fruit-based diet healed his ulcerative colitis, so I'm guessing that he doesn't have it anymore. He also says that he had some success with his diet, got off all of his medication, but his digestion has just never been fully healed. He still has a lot of things like pain, bloating, constipation, acne, and depression. He has tried every extreme vegan diet in the book and I mean has eaten nothing but oranges once for five days. Now he's kind of gone from like one extreme to another. He does OMAD which is one meal a day. Uh, he's done the carnivore diet eating like raw meat. He was definitely a follower of Freely and her ex-boyfriend at one time and seeing that he ate a raw vegan fruit based diet again continuing the pattern. Next up we have Kasumi Chris. I think her name is Kasumi. Um, she was vegan for four years, went vegan for health reasons. At first she felt better, she had more energy, her acne improved and later declined, um, but she was happier. She also felt more bloated though, gassy, burped a lot, had anxiety, negative thinking. She had thinning hair, dry skin. Episodes of binge eating a lot. Like I never had them before. Before I was vegan, I didn't have them as severe as I did when I was vegan. I also purged, not because I wanted to be thin. I didn't. I don't think it was anorexia or bulimia. I have no idea. But I purged foods out of my body because I felt that they were toxic inside of me. Like I didn't want that digesting in my body. And that was more towards the later two years of her being a vegan that she started to feel uh, those kinds of things. She doesn't mention whether or not she's gone to a nutritionist or a doctor, got any blood work done. I'm guessing she didn't. She did eat a very restrictive diet though. Again, I'm guessing either completely raw vegan or a very high raw vegan diet for around the last year and a half of being vegan. Um, she would have fruit during the day, salad at night. She even lost her period on her raw food diet. She ate an egg one day and felt better right away. No negative thoughts at all, more satiated, not always thinking about food, not always eating. She says her body felt like it needed more fat. I'm not sure why she didn't just eat more fat on a vegan diet. Um, but she now thinks that veganism is bad for everyone. 
she's kind of another person who's gone from one extreme to another, now has tried the carnivore diet. Don't really know what to say about that. <laughs> Next up, we have Christy Swadling, who I think is probably the most like genuine and authentic. In her video, I can't understand how anyone could like have a problem with any of the things she said. She had severe IBS for the past three years at the point of making this video in August 2018. And she ate a plant-based diet for the last year of that, hoping that it would help her. Um, but it didn't and it actually made things worse and she was also allergic to soy she couldn't really eat grains because of her ibs she could only eat small amounts of fruit and only right away in the morning no legumes so it was just really hard for her to eat a plant-based diet and she went vegan for health she specifies that i don't really see why people have a problem with people who eat a plant-based diet um, or a vegan diet if you're not that uptight about being politically correct about the terms for health and then go back to eating animal products for health. So she eventually went back to eating animal products and didn't feel as bad as she did eating um, vegan. But she actually does say that she would really love to be able to go back to eating vegan one day. And I'm not saying veganism is something that I'm not going to choose in the future because if I can fully heal my gut, I would love to continue on a vegan lifestyle. So now we're finally starting to get into the more well-known ones. Up first is Joey Graceva, who has like 9 million subscribers. He doesn't talk about veganism on his channel from what I could tell, um, but he did, of course, obviously, make a video about why he was no longer vegan, but also it seems from the comments that I've seen, he was never vegan. He was just like high plant-based. He would eat animal products every now and then, but he was kind of vegan for three years and had a lot of energy when he first went vegan, but eventually he found that he was always feeling really tired. He had gut issues, he lost more weight than he wanted to, and really overall found veganism to be really hard for him. I'm kind of unsure of the timeline of when things happened, but eventually he got candida. I'm guessing he got candida while he was vegan, but it could have been after he stopped being vegan. I don't know. This video was made in October and it seems like it was in the summer of 20. 18 when he stopped being vegan before that or after that I don't know <laughs> um, he went to Japan in 2018 was th sick the whole time got back and one to two weeks later decided to eat chicken and had a lot more energy so he stopped veganism because of that and I think because of the candida I don't know what kind of diet he ate um, you know I I did a lot of research for this video I spent a lot of time on it but I couldn't go through like 20 different pe videos of people vlogging to try to see if they talked about what they ate for the past year. Even if you cut back like once, one meal or one day out of your week where you don't have meat, it really will make an impact. Then in November, Kalel made a video about how she was going to stop being vegan. She had been vegan for over four years. The last three years of her being vegan, she had really high amounts of hair loss. First, she blamed it, and she blamed a lot of other stuff on the fact that she was on Accutane for a while. She also had dry hair, dry, scaling, reactive, sensitive skin, and she thought she just needed more protein and iron. I think it's especially scary for me because I'm already doing everything in my power besides taking an iron supplement, which I don't want to take because you can get too much iron easily with supplements and I just think that's scary and I just don't want to mess with that. Which is definitely concern when you're anemic getting too much iron. But anyways, she decided to change her diet to try to get more iron. She had really, really been struggling with her health for the past two years so, and especially the past years, which kind of just continued to go downhill. But she really downplayed it I'm either to herself or on social media, I don't know, maybe both because she didn't want to admit it. At some point, her acne came back and she was starting to experience extreme brain fog, memory issues, depression. 40 plus times a day where I just stop and I completely forget what I'm doing or what I was saying. She felt like she was eating super healthy. Luckily, she was responsible and decided to get a bunch of tests done, which is very good, and it's like the first time in this list that we actually see this. So the tests she got done were blood, urine, stool, allergies, hormones, thyroid, 
microbiome in the gut, skin, mouth, vagina, and nose. She also, in the video, wanted to get a brain scan, but she hadn't gotten it done yet, and she also hadn't gotten all of the results from the test that she did do back at the time of making the video. Her results showed that she had a hormonal imbalance. She had really high testosterone. She also tested positive for pathogenic fungus in her gut, vagina, skin, and urine, which she thinks cause the dry scaling skin. She also had insulin resistance, low levels of iron, zinc, and lysine, but she didn't want to supplement for anything because she wanted to be natural. So she ended up going to this super famous doctor who gave her some advice, so she started to eat eggs and meat, and she's also doing some other things to help with her issues. For the fungal issue, she's using four natural antifungals, eating lots of antifungal foods, which have helped her like 10% but haven't cured it. For her hormones, she's on a low glycemic index diet. She's eating mostly veggies, no processed foods, grains, fruit, uh, takes probiotics every day, trying to maintain a low stable blood sugar levels, and also trying to gain weight. She feels that she cannot be vegan because it's inherently high carb and she needs to eat a low carb diet to help with her problems, which isn't true. You can eat a low carb vegan diet, um, but she also says she felt like she was dying. Really, I, I do feel like I'm dying. So. I don't know. I don't know if she's being dramatic or if she really, really, really was hiding it very well in her diets or in her videos. But what's interesting is that she also doesn't blame her problems on veganism. Now we're getting into December and this is when the channel Moon and Rock post their video. So their names are Evan and Megan. Evan's been vegan for 10 years, Megan was vegan for 5 years. In the last few months to a year, they both haven't really been feeling that great. Evan has experienced brain health issues. And I like to consider myself a very responsible vegan, or was. Uh, I had all the supplements, DHA, multivitamin. I would take mushroom and greens powders, various ones, and try to eat a really nutritious and wholesome diet. Megan had digestive issues and she started to crave ghee while she was pregnant. She really thinks that when she craves something, that's her body, body telling her that she needs that. So they started adding in organ meats, eggs, sardines, and ghee to their diet. And I'm guessing that helped with their problems. And now these people both have done kind of extreme diets, slightly restrictive, you know. I think it seems like Evan has done a little bit more extreme stuff than Megan has. He's done at least one six-day juice cleanse. I'm sure he's done more in his life. And several people mentioned um, in the comments on their recent video that he was eating only one time per day at some point. Eating one time per day would make getting enough nutrients on any diet, no matter how balanced, <laughs> like pretty much impossible, right? Getting enough calories, getting enough nutrients, eating that way, yeah, it's pretty much impossible. Uh, doing so on their diet on this like high carb, low protein diet is just even worse. But in general, they both ate a high raw diet, lots of fruit, same pattern as most of these people. I craved eggs, I craved butter and ghee, I craved meat and fish, and I didn't eat those things, but I, you know, I wish that I had listened to my body and not judged myself for what I felt like my body needed mm. nourishment from. Then in January, we have Bonnie Rebecca's video, and her video is about her and her partner, Tim. And so Bonnie was vegan for five years and Tim was vegan for longer than that. And when they first got into veganism, raw foods and high carb, low fat were really popular. And they both did that. They ate a lot of smoothies, rice and potatoes. They were friends with Freely and her ex-boyfriend. A few months into being high carb, low fat, they both got acne. And Tim's was a lot worse than Bonnie's and it was also a lot weirder because he had never had acne in his life. And so the high carb, low fat community told them it was just detox. And they believed that because they trusted these people. And so they also thought that it could have been from the oil and fat from when they were eating out like one or two times a week. 
so they completely cut out all oil and fat from their diets. Now looking back on it, I'm kind of like, why did we keep eating that way when, you know, obviously it wasn't getting better. But at the time we were making so many excuses for it, you know, being like, oh, well, maybe we're just not getting enough sleep, maybe we're not drinking enough water, maybe we're not doing this, this and this. And because we thought it was like the healthiest way you could possibly eat, it didn't make sense that it was making skin break out. After about one year, they started to alter the way they were eating, started incorporating more cook cooked foods into their diet, ate more of a starch solution type of diet, which is just a high starch diet in general. Um, low fat, it didn't really help, but they felt more satiated. So six months later, they tried to eat just more balanced overall, they felt better, and there was a small skin improvement for Bonnie. Eventually, things were just still not good, and so they reached out to all the plant-based doctors and online gurus. They went to see a doctor in person. She told Tim that he had a bacterial overgrowth and that he should take antibiotics, eat less carbs, fiber, and more protein. I think she encouraged animal protein, and Tim said no to that, but he did the rest of the things and took the antibiotics. His skin got better after one month, but there was no change in the digestion digestive problems. He stopped the antibiotics after three months and the symptoms all came back. And so he got new ones for six months. They cleared his skin and then once it was done, he obviously stopped taking them and then the symptoms came back. So we got new antibiotics for another three months, but this time nothing happened and in fact things started to actually get worse with his skin. He was also now experiencing insomnia, chronic fatigue, depression, anxiety, and serious pain, gas, and bloating after eating. Bonnie this entire time kind of had like a very much smaller and less extreme version of all the Tim, all of the problems that Tim was experiencing. They tried eating a low FODMAP diet, a high fat diet. They went to many naturopaths, nutritionists, um, who told them to eat animal products. They said no every time. One naturopath said that Tim couldn't fight off his bacterial overgrowth because his immune system was weak. He was also deficient in zinc, magnesium, iodine, and others. He had high levels of all of the heavy metals, but especially mercury and cadmium. A doctor told Bonnie that she had a parasite and lots of gut inflammation, and her liver wasn't properly functioning um, partially or fully because of the parasite, which was likely causing the breakouts. So she started taking vitamins A and C and lots of herbs, which really helps. Um, and she started also eating more fats. But at this point, Tim was getting worse. So they decided to get allergy tested. Turns out Bonnie was allergic to about 10 things and Tim was allergic to almost everything that they were tested for. A dietitian said that it might be caused by intestinal permeability, which is like a damaged gut lining. And so she suggested a low allergen, low FODMAP diet, which helped Bonnie, but she felt unsatisfied and it didn't help Tim. And at this point he was losing a lot of weight, like an unhealthy amount of weight. Bonnie stopped taking all the herbs she was after nine months and her symptoms came back, she felt helpless. She, They then learned about SIBO and started looking for SIBO test doctors. They found one who I think was overseas with a four month waiting list. And so in the meantime, a different doctor told Tim that his gut can't break down and extract nutrients from foods. So Tim started eating fish two times per day and eggs once a day. And within five days, all of his symptoms had cleared. He changed from eating fish to chicken for calories and weight gain. Once they got into the other doctor that they were on the wait list for, they were told that Bonnie had a bacterial imbalance in her gut. Uh, omega-3 to 6 ratio imbalance, cortisol level imbalance, high inflammatory markers, and was told to add fish and eggs because she needed more protein without the fiber that plant foods have. So when Bonnie would have large amounts of fish and eggs with her meals, she wouldn't have any pain or bloating, and she found that when she was eating only plant meals, they were gradually starting to get better as well, and her skin cleared within a few weeks. So like I said earlier, Bonnie and Tim were greatly influenced by Freely. They were friends with her. They went to the Thai Fruit Fest. So the way that they ate when they first went vegan could have definitely affected a lot of the things that they were experiencing, but Bonnie does say that she doesn't blame her problems on veganism. I really think that the amount of hate that she got for this video was just ridiculous. I mean, you can tell that she tried so like both of them tried so many different things before they decided to go back to eating animal products. A couple of weeks later, Stella Ray made her quite 
interesting video to say the least about why she is no longer vegan. Um, she was vegan for four to five years. It seems like she did it for health and also like for the animals, maybe. Um, she'd previously done high carb, low fat for a couple years, um, likely followed Freely's advice, but she was just like obsessed with high carb, low fat, but at the same time, she had bad digestion. She felt like she was eating all the time, but never satisfied and always so bloated, had the worst poops and gas. And so midway through 2017, I believe, she started lifting weights and she started craving salmon as well. So she started to eat more plant proteins at this time, like mock meats, and would plug her calories into chronometer, which is a good thing to do. Good for her for doing that. She said she was eating enough and getting enough protein, but she was still so bloated that she didn't want to wear crop tops. So I remember one day I just decided to eat salmon. So she had a meal of salmon with rice and broccoli and wasn't as bloated. A couple weeks later, had cravings again, had some egg whites and salmon, felt better. Still ate mostly vegan aside from one to a few times a week then started having really bad bloating again. Every day for breakfast, she was having oatmeal, which was making her bloated. So she stopped doing that and decided to eat more eggs or like whole eggs for breakfast, more fish, tried chicken because she craved that. I remember I tried chicken. I was so shook. Yeah, you guys, I ate chicken. That's like so shocking. She was not bloated or unsatisfied or constantly hungry. She felt better, had more muscle growth had regular poops. Which I feel like nobody talks about. And I just remember thinking that was normal and part of it and that I was doing the right thing anyway. Prior to this, she had been spending tons of money on probiotics, digestive enzymes. She said she was drinking a lot of water, working out, eating, eating a lot of greens. Like it was just so confusing to me. Bloating just wouldn't go away until I started just kind of having a more balanced overall diet. Which is not surprising. <laughs> she didn't mention ever going to see a doctor or a nutritionist, which I feel like for the most part probably means that these people didn't do that because if you had, you would probably mention that, just in my opinion. Um, she also lied about being vegan for a year. Not, she didn't, you know, just not talk about it for a year, but she made videos implying that she was still vegan while she wasn't, which is a tiny bit shady in my opinion. I felt very guilty about it too, and I didn't want anyone to know. And I think a lot of it also had to do with the fact that I was still promoting myself as a vegan online, so I kind of felt like I was lying. I think we should be supporting everyone's efforts, even the small efforts towards living a more healthy, compassionate, and sustainable lifestyle. Two days later, we got a video from the one and only, everyone's favorite, online vegan personality, Charles Marlowe, <laughs> who was vegan for three years for who knows why. I don't really understand this guy at all, so. I've been doing it for three or four years. I'm lucky I survived that. I don't know. Um, but eventually he started craving heavy cream. So he bought some whipping cream and drank it. And when I drank this cream, it literally like, it felt like it was rejuvenating me. It felt like, it was filling so many gaps in my diet, like so many nutritional gaps from the last three or four years of, of veganism. He's drinking a pint of whipping cream a few times a week. <laughs> it just gives him bursts of energy, he says. He's also eating oysters and tuna once in a while, but hasn't eaten any eggs or meat because he just hasn't had any cravings for them, even though he said this. The same way I found veganism is the same way that I've sort of been introduced to some other ideas. And that's through YouTube and through a lot of the people in the carnivore community. He's also said that he's had trouble keeping fat on his face and just in general didn't feel good. He kind of already has this like anti-vegan mentality. Mind you, I've been vegan for like three years. So I'm probably depleted in, in a lot of different you know micronutrients and macronutrients such as fat. I've been depleting myself for three years. He's a bit of an extremist or like conspiracy theorist, um, kind of says a lot of things for like dramatic effect. I feel like they want people on plant-based diets so they can control them. They can, you know, master manipulate the economy and the culture through controlling the food supply. That's what this is all about. He also is a recovering heroin addict. I believe he kind of relapsed for a while in the past year or two. So I don't know if he's like in the healthiest mind state at this point in time. Um, I don't mean to like say that to be rude or mock him for it, but I just, I think it is important to point out. Um, he didn't do any what I eat in a day videos. I don't think he, <laughs> 
is kind of the person who influenced anyone to go vegan is just kind of a weird personality. I'm sure you know what I mean if you've seen his videos. Next up, we have Tim Sheep, who was vegan for six years for health reasons. After about three years of being vegan, his health started to decline and he originally blamed it on his pre-vegan diet. He was experiencing brain fog, depression, lack of recovery, lack of energy, waking up um, stiff in the joints, had fragile mus muscles, couldn't do push-ups or yoga without injury. It's also important to know that this guy does like ninja warrior stuff. So he's doing a lot of exercise, a lot of movement. Um, he, at some point in time, did a fast in Hawaii, I'm guessing a water fast. He has done fruit fasts with herbs. He has tried 80-10-10, high carb, low fat, high fat, low carb. He is claims to have tried a whole foods plant-based diet and done junk food vegan which is kind of interesting to me considering how like much of a purity mindset he seems to have from like the few videos i've seen of him i honestly didn't know like anything about him before a couple days ago um but he <laughs> i mean he drank his urine almost every day for two years he took a lot of sups and did injections of something i don't know what maybe B12 injections. Tim has also done a 35 day water fast with Doug Graham. And he says he did that at the culmination of his health decline. He came out of the fast on a raw food vegan diet because he believed it was the optimum human diet. And then he went to cooked food and got digestive issues again and then tried salmon and eggs and felt some improvement in his health then went back to vegan then went back to not vegan so he really does have this personality that's into like purity and being as natural as possible um he's also kind of a bit of a alternative thinker i mean drinking the urine he also i'm pretty sure is a flat earther. Something that I do find to be very respectable is that he um, did step down from his role, or he was the founder of a clothing, a vegan clothing company called Ethics and Antics, which is now just called Ethics, I believe. So he's not making money from it anymore. I think compared to some of these people who are still profiting off of people being vegan or being interested in veganism, um, he is one who isn't doing that. So that's awesome. And I'll just continue to follow my path and see wherever that leads and promote what is in my heart. So now we have come to Ravana who posted her video less than 10 days before I'm making this. She was vegan for six years and I think raw for about four to five of those because I think she went raw vegan from basically the start and didn't go back to cook food until a year or two ago. She felt really good in the beginning of being raw vegan. Um, about a year into her low fat raw vegan diet, she did, guess what? a 25 day water fast with Doug Graham. Now Doug Graham, the author of the 80-10-10 diet, somebody who promotes a low fat, high fruit, raw vegan diet, runs water fasting retreats where people have almost died and he doesn't seem to give a crap. I will link a video um, a woman made who almost died at his retreat. It's very like interesting to watch, it's heartbreaking. This guy has so much influence over a lot of these people who ate raw vegan or high raw vegan diets. And I'll insert a clip right here um, from Happy Healthy Vegan where he talks about some, some interesting things about this guy. The Florida Board of Chiropractic Medicine determined that Doug made serious errors, failed to properly screen or examine people, determine whether fasting was safe or appropriate for them, failed to keep legally required records, and didn't meet the standard of care required under law. And I point this out because remember, Ravana did her 25-day water fast under Doug Graham's care. But anyways, she says she felt amazing during or after, I don't know, the water fast, but she also lost her period. I'm talking to other people who are in the movement. They're like, no, it's, it's normal, it's okay, you're still ovulating, you're just not bleeding. So when you go below the amount of calories that your body requires, the result can be a loss in period. It's not time for your body to reproduce if you're not getting enough food. She didn't have her period for two years, and so she finally started to look into it at the end of 2015, went to some naturopathic doctors, her hormones turned out to be really out of whack. She changed her diet, she increased her fat because her doctor told her to, started to add salt into her diet because she wasn't eating any 
salt. Um, and she started to eat cooked food around the same time because she just started craving it. So that could have been unrelated, she says, but also might have been related. Um, and after two months, she got her period back, but it was irregular. And so in September 2017, she lost her period again for five months. She got checked. She believes stress was part of the reason, but her hormones were still bad. She was anemic. She had low thyroid levels. Her doctor told her to take testosterone and thyroid medication um, to supplement and to eat eggs and gain weight. She did gain weight, um, but she didn't want to do any of the others, so she went to a different doctor and nutritionist. She was told to supplement for iron, eat more fat and protein, and track it, and she did. She got her period back, and it was regular this time. At this point, she was taking many supplements, she says, but she stopped doing that because she didn't think they were doing anything since there was no improvement in tests that were done. So then in June 2018, she saw a new naturopath. Um, at this point, she had been feeling really tired and low energy. In July, she got candida, went on a candida diet. Her symptoms went away in a few weeks. She got tested and her candida was all gone. She also had digestive issues though, and doctors predicted that she had SIBO towards the end of the summer, but she didn't get tested for it for a while. And instead, she ate a raw vegan diet to cleanse. She did that for a week. And then she did a juice cleanse and she did a water fast. And the water fast worked best because she wasn't eating anything and she was feeling bad after every meal she was eating, so she just wasn't feeling sick. She also tried intermittent fasting and then eventually decided to eat a balanced vegan diet. In late October, she did the SIBO breath test. She got results back in early January 2019. She had SIBO. Her doctor gave her two options. The first option was to follow a vegan SIBO diet for four to six weeks. She could eat bok choy, eggplant, kale, and carrots, and then a few other veggies in measured amounts. She could eat some nuts and seeds, no fruit, potatoes, legumes, greens, and she could take a powder supplement when she was hungry as a meal replacement, or she could follow the regular SIBO diet and add animal protein. But she was sick of taking supplements. She didn't want to do that, so she chose option two. She ate fish and eggs for three weeks, and then found a plant-based gastroenterologist who suggested being vegan and taking antibiotics. Throughout this whole time, I haven't taken antibiotics because I want to heal the most natural way. Antibiotics, I don't, I believe that they don't go to the root of the problem. They will relieve my symptoms, but they're not gonna get to the root of the problem. So she just ate vegan without taking the antibiotics. The symptoms came back worse than ever. So then she went back to the SIBO diet and felt better, and she's been doing that basically for less than a month um, at the time of making the video. The reason in the first place why she made the video is because she was caught eating fish and trying to hide it with her arms because somebody else was vlogging her. Llevo aquí más de un mes, pues no aquí. Yo soy local. Pero sí, en, en Asia. Fue a Japón, fue a... And I'm pretty sure most people thought it was pretty shady. Um, the fact that she didn't want to take antibiotics is also a little bit weird. Um, the one thing that I can say is cool, <laughs> I guess, is that besides Christy Swadling, she is the only person who said that she does want to go back to eating a plant-based diet. And I want to, I really want to be able to go back to eating plant-based. And last but not least, at this point in time, we have Elise from Raw Alignment, who, out of all these people, is the only one who I know more than just like a small amount about. Like, I didn't watch any videos for the past couple years from any of these people, some of mine didn't even really know. Um, but Elise, not that I follow her because I like her, but she just does a lot of stuff that happens to be really controversial, and her videos always come up in my recommendations, and there's always something that she's doing that I'm just like, what the heck? One thing I do want to mention that isn't really that important, but I'll say it anyways. Um, a lot of people think that she posted her video just three days after Ravana because, like, Ravana posted her video. Personally, I think she posted her video when she did because she was waiting for her Australia retreat that she hosts to be over um, because otherwise I think she would have done it a bit earlier instead of taking a month break from YouTube. I don't think she wanted to deal with that before going to a retreat of people who were likely mostly vegan or interested in being vegan. But Elise was vegan for almost five years and she went raw vegan one or two months into that. She ate one of the unhealthiest diets I've ever seen and really, really thought it was healthy. 
and I don't know if she at this point realizes that it was not healthy even though so many people have told her honey, that's it's not okay to eat like 1200 calories a day when you're an adult, like she's 25 or she would just eat like bananas, papayas and salad every day and then a year later she would just eat guacamole crackers and salad every day my personal body doesn't digest raw veggies very well. But she used to live in Hawaii on the rainy side of the big island, which apparently there's mold in a lot of homes there. And eventually she realized she had mold illness, which I really don't know if is real or not. There seems to be a lot of conflicting evidence. Her symptoms got worse over time. She was experiencing migraines, chronic sinus congestion, couldn't breathe out of her nose, had brain fog, memory loss, extreme appetite loss, um, inability to articulate herself and communicate properly. A lot of these things I'm pretty darn sure she did not talk about for a long time. I would really like to be eating all fruit with little to no avocado in my diet just because whenever I do have a little bit of fat, I kind of feel more heavy, I feel like cloudy in the head, I just don't feel as energized or as clear-minded and light on my feet. She even says that she knew she had to leave Hawaii a year before she actually did it. Um, eventually when she did leave Hawaii, which was I think less than a year ago, she moved to Denver, Colorado, and within a few days her sinus congestion was less intense, her head and face pressure was less also. She got blood work done and she was so unsurprisingly low and deficient in almost everything, which when we go through her what I eat in a day videos, because I went through 15 of her what I eat in a day videos kind of over the course of time, you will see that this is not at all surprising and I'm sure most people probably already are not surprised, um, but she also had hormone imbalance and a high candida infection. So she went into this vegan mold diet and supplement protocol, having like, I swear, 10 supplements. Um, she felt better, her congestion got better within a couple weeks, and then within a couple months, it was completely gone. So eight months in, she felt way better, but her brain was still not functioning properly. She was lacking good cognitive, cognitive function, she says. Um, but she got blood work done again and everything was better and her candida was gone. And so from her <laughs> research, if you can call it that, considering she has said this before. I do want to share that I've never ever ever been the person to research and research and research before doing something. Now some might say that's irresponsible. Some might say that's stupid. Some might say I shouldn't be making videos then. But that's just not what this channel is. From her research on improving brain function, she kept coming across salmon and grass-fed beef as some foods that would help with that. I got so, so interested, I still am, in the concept of changing my external environment and my internal environment in order to enhance my health. And that concept, that kind of like, uh, process is something called biohacking. Toward the end of last year, I believe, she went back to Hawaii to host one of her retreats. And within 15 minutes of being in one of her friend's house on the rainy side of the island, um, her symptoms came back full force. And she also had friends telling her about how they changed their diets, I'm guessing from vegan to not vegan, and how they felt way better in a couple days to weeks maximum. She came back to Colorado and her symptoms were still there. Unsurprisingly, they took weeks to months to clear up last time, but she says she suffered so bad for three days, so she decided to follow her intuitive pull and appeal towards salmon. So she had eight ounces of salmon one night and the next morning, it was the best she'd ever felt in three years. No congestion, brain fog, migraines, lack of clarity, nothing at all wrong with her in any way. Everything was better overnight from eating salmon once. She believes this happened because salmon is high in omega-3s and specifically DHA and EPA. I personally found Elisa's video to be like, just extremely disingenuous. It was so defensive. It was kind of arrogant. It just came off in a really patronizing way. And especially the end of her video, 
I just like I can hardly watch it. It just makes me like feel gross. Just remember that we are more than the food that we eat. Let that sink in. I saw multiple people comment that that made them unsubscribe because it's just so condescending. And you know, this is that's just not the kind of people that you want to follow and look up to. I tried high carb, low fat, low fat, high carb, like juice fasting, water fasting, like all the things. Trend number five is the flip flopping and this is a common trend in all ex-vegans. There is no balance in their life or diet. They are always pushing the limits and their bodies. Juicing, water fasting, fruit only diets are all common occurrences in these ex-vegans. She has talked about Doug Graham before, so Doug Graham has definitely inspired her to do certain things. Um, she has a seven day juice fast program that she sells on her website, which she has no qualifications to be giving people advice on how to juice cleanse, especially considering, okay, get this, she's a health coach and listen to her talk about a mistake she made while juice cleansing once in this video. I learned that sugarcane juice has absolutely zero fat and zero protein. It was kind of a shocker to me. I just, I didn't even think, it didn't even phase me that I should check out the nutrition facts of sugarcane juice because this is what I did, okay? I really love the taste of sugarcane juice, so I went on to Google and I type in sugarcane juice benefits, and this is the first thing that comes up. Sugarcane juice is considered an alkaline forming food because of the high concentration of calcium, magnesium, potassium, iron, and manganese. <laughs> Um, in it. I mean, even though that video was posted a long time ago, it's clear to me that she just really does not have a lot of knowledge on health. And if you don't know a lot about health coaches, I mean, being a health coach is great. My stepsister's a health coach, so nothing against it. But you don't, you don't tell people how to eat. You don't say, this is the healthy way to eat. This is how you do it. <laughs> She's also somebody who has kind of a purity mindset needs to cleanse the toxins out of her body. Both her and Ravana and Evan from Moon and Rock have done colonics, um, colon hydrotherapy. The reason why I wanted to get a colonic is because it is a form of cleansing. It helps your body detox. You know, there are consequences to our actions. There are consequences to obsessions with trying to be cleansed. There are consequences to doing extremely unnatural things like forcing pressurized water up your ass but she doesn't want to take antibiotics. I will leave a link down below to a video by Lily Koi Hawaii, who talks about how that could have impacted these people's health problems. But Elise also has tons of what I eat in a day videos up and she might try to make it seem like, oh, she doesn't really talk about food on her channel anymore, hasn't for a year or two. She still has a ton of videos. I think in the past year, I counted 13 of like 58 videos, something like that. It was over 20% of her videos are related to what she eats or recipes or what's in my fridge. I think she just doesn't want to be accountable. Uh, over the years, as Raw Lyman has grown, there have been a lot of people who have said you need to be more responsible with what you share and when you share you can't just share as you're going through life you have to like wait until you have it all figured out essentially to share because what you share along the way could really sway someone and negatively impact their life and it's irresponsible i think that if i waited until i was like done and accomplished and like figured it all out i wouldn't have shared so many of the life experiences that I have shared over the past few years. But anyways, that is in total 21 different YouTube channels that I found talking about the experiences of 23 different people when you include Bonnie's uh, partner Tim and Moon and Rock being two different people. Of these 23 different people, 16 of them ate either fully raw diets or high raw, high carb, low fat, 80-10-10 style diets both of which I think most of us would consider in most cases to not really be that healthy and to be a bit restrictive and in the ways that they did it, very calorically and or nutritionally deficient. And those are just people that I'm 100% sure ate unhealthy restrictive diets. Some of the other people who didn't really talk about it, it's hard to know. Um, but of the other seven, three of them had pre-existing health conditions 
that didn't get better on a vegan diet and in fact got worse. Of the last four, Tana Mojo likely went back because she just wanted to. Joey Graceffa didn't even eat a fully vegan diet. Charles Marlowe is somebody who will just do things to be extreme and I don't really know how to explain any of the things he would do. He's not the kind of person who I would see going vegan in the first place, so it's just... I don't really know what to say about him. And Blair White didn't want to take supplements for a short period of time to overcome deficiencies. Since none of those four really shared much or anything about what they ate, it's really hard to comment on what they ate. And since I'm not all qualified to talk about the health issues that the other three experienced, I'm not going to. As for the 16 who have had past with extreme diets. I chose a few, um, like the ones who talked about diet on their channel, shared about their diet as well, and I thought we would look at a few of their what I ate in a day videos. So I chose, I try to choose like the most viewed one for a lot of them. I just think it's important to look at these people who talked about health, promoted what they ate as a healthy diet, really led people to leave, believe that they were healthy for a large amount of time that they weren't. You know, those are the people who had the most influence over how other people chose to eat. And so we'll look at the diets of Elle Taylor, Stella Ray, Megan Moon, Ra Vanna, Ra Lyman, and Tim Shi. But we will start with Elle Taylor. So the video from Elle that I looked at was this one has over 600,000 views. And surprisingly, but kind of not when you think about it. She actually wasn't really low in too many things, but that's because, like it shows in the thumbnail, she had over 3,500 calories. So it would be kind of hard to be low in a ton of things. But this was my best guess of what she ate during that video. There are definitely, like, this is not exact by any means. And for some of these people, I kind of had to guess the amounts that they ate because they didn't really say or they didn't really show. So she had three cantaloupes for breakfast. She had a smoothie with banana, spinach, and apples, and a few other things in it. She had three papayas for lunch, um, and then she made a dinner, which would actually looked like a pretty good dinner, other than the fact that it was huge, where she roasted some peppers, and I think boiled some carrots and leeks, or cooked them somehow, had that with some avocado, and put some onion in there, had some greens with that, and tomatoes, and this is how many calories I calculated that she got. Um, <laughs> which is ridiculous. This is what her vitamins look like. Like I said, she's getting extreme amounts of a lot of these because she's just eating so much food. I mean, she had three cantaloupes for breakfast. Of course, she's not going to be getting any B12 or D. Not sure if she supplemented for those. As for minerals, the only thing she was low in were selenium and sodium, which she wasn't super low in, so it's nothing to really be alarmed about. For fat and proteins, she was low in omega-6s, and you'll see from the other ones that I show that this is a very common one to be low in, um, but she is actually getting enough protein, but like I said, it's, it's hard not to when you're eating that much food. Next we have Stella Ray, and her most viewed What I Ate Today video, that was when she ate high carb low fat, has 65,000 views, and this is what she ate during the day. So what Stella ate for breakfast was some bananas, blueberries, and mango. She didn't show it until like she'd already eaten some of it, so I just kind of had to guess how much she had eaten. Um, she also had some matcha tea. She had potatoes like multiple times throughout the day and some mixed greens with her potatoes that she had for lunch. She also then had some rice and pinto beans with ketchup and mustard and then rice and cauliflower and zucchini and I think ketchup uh, for dinner. She only got 1800 calories, which I believe she's quite tall, like over 5'9", 5'10". Um, she ate very, very low fat and not a whole lot of protein either. I mean, you can see over here her macros, like she's having a very, very high carb diet. For vitamins, she was kind of low in choline and vitamin E, barely got any calcium. Uh, zinc was just a tiny bit low and then pretty low on sodium as well. Like I said, very low on fat, super low on omega-6s. Looks like she's pretty good with all of the amino acids, but overall a bit low on protein. But also for all these people, I just put in like the target uh, macro ratio is to be 60 carbs, 20 protein, 20 fat, because that's kind of like a very common amount. Obviously, most of them are eating <laughs> a lot more carbs than that. Next, we have Tim Sheaf, who 
eat a very high raw diet this day and it is just alarming um, what he ate but anyways he had half of a watermelon for breakfast and snacked on some bok choy beet juice coconut water and later snacked on four nectarines some cherries I don't know how many he could have eaten like two of them I just said two cups because that looked like how much he had. I don't know if he ate all them, but I decided I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. He went to this restaurant and had a raw salad, which I just kind of had to guess what was in there. Then for dinner, he had three sweet potatoes on his plate. He had some spinach and lettuce, avocado, chickpeas, tomato, cucumber, corn, balsamic vinegar on a salad, and then he had paprika and coconut oil on the potatoes. He only got less than 1,700 calories, and this is an active guy. He was doing active things throughout the day. Like I said, he does ninja warrior type of stuff. So very low in calories, very low in protein as well. Also something I forgot to mention is that like don't pay attention to the calorie surplus or the total amount of protein, carbs, and fat that they recommend um, because I set that all for like Elise from Raw Alignment because she's the first person who I did this for. And so I just put in her height and weight and age and whatever. Um, so that part isn't important, it's just more looking at like how much they did get. Here's what his vitamins look like. Again, low in choline and vitamin E, just like Stella Ray's. Low in calcium, sodium, and zinc, just like Stella Ray. He was very low in selenium as well and low in iron. Not too horribly low in any of the amino acids. Overall protein was pretty low and for both omegas, not looking good. For Megan, she has a video about what she ate while she was pregnant and this has almost 60,000 views. But overall, she did consume, you know, over 1,600 calories, so that's good. I'm not an expert on how many calories pregnant women need, um, but at least it's better than some of these other people. But she was very high in carbs and very low in protein and fat, as you can see here and here. Again, low in choline and vitamin E seems to be a trend. Low in calcium, just a tiny bit low in iron and phosphorus, and low in selenium, sodium, and zinc. Again, a pattern. Very low in omega-6s, and very low in the proteins in almost all of them. Now on to Ravana, who you would hope, since she's a health coach, since she does meal prep videos, um, and since she does like 21-day raw vegan challenges and other, sells other programs on her site, which you would hope are coming from somebody who's re experiencing positive results and who's eating a healthy balanced diet her diet is just not not good not the kind of person who i would want to take health advice from so i looked at this video which has almost 600,000 views and she doesn't show what she eats in one day but she shows what she commonly eats in one day so it's like a, a bit more accurate and so she says that she starts out most of her days with either like one large watermelon or two smaller ones, so I approximated that as being about 10 cups cubed, I don't know. Then for lunch, she often has an entire pineapple and an entire papaya, and then has that with some iceberg lettuce. And then she likes to make big salads for dinner where she just has some mixed greens and some cherry tomatoes in there. And then she showed four sauces that she commonly uses, and so I went to that sauce video and chose one of them, which has half an avocado, two celery stalks, a stalk of green onion, some lime juice, and cilantro leaves. And so this is what that looked like for her. 1,400 calories, again, high in carbs, very low in protein and fat, low in choline, low in vitamin E, low in calcium, a bit in iron and phosphorus, low in selenium, sodium, and zinc low in both omegas, but especially in omega-6s, um, pretty low in overall protein, and a bit low in a bunch of amino acids. Overall, I would say that is a bit calorically and nutritionally deficient. And last, we have Raw Lyman, who has tons of what I eat in a day videos. I picked a, a good amount from when how she used to eat when like, she first started her channel, and then she was eating like a high fruit diet when she first moved to Hawaii, and then she added like more vegetables, but she was still eating like just papayas and bananas and then she was just eating guacamole and crackers um, so I picked from all over the place she's also a health coach and does retreats like she she promotes herself as kind of an authority figure like uh, a leader which you know it's not bad to be a leader rather than a follower but she doesn't promote herself as somebody who's just like 
you know, sharing what I'm doing and like, oh, what are you guys doing? It's like, I know what I'm talking about. I'm healthy. Watch me show you how to eat. That's personally the vibe I get from her videos. And as you will see, I'll try to go through these pretty fast since I have 15 of them. They're just not that nutritionally adequate. So the first what I eat a day video she ever made was this one. So what she eats is two mangoes, some watermelon juice, some lemon juice, I believe in some water, some orange juice, some pineapple juice, some dates, and uh, not even an entire avocado. She gets almost 1900 calories, very low in protein, um, as you can see, very low in all the amino acids, hardly any omega-3s or 6. Now for her vitamins and minerals, I didn't realize this until a little bit too late, um, but the database on Chronometer, which is what I'm using to calculate these foods, didn't really have any information on biotin, chromium, and iodine, so completely ignore all those because they're going to be like almost 0% the entire time just because the website doesn't have information on those. So ignore those, but for her vitamins, she's low in B2 and B3, very low in choline and vitamin E and vitamin K, which is a new one. <laughs> Super low in calcium and iron and phosphorus, selenium, sodium, zinc, of course. On to number two, I'm just going to put up what she eats on the screen, and if you want to stop and read it, you can, um, but I'm not going to go through all of them because it would just take way too much time. But basically, in this video, she only eats a thousand calories. Like a thousand calories. It's just ridiculous. And somehow she gets quite a bit of protein. And I think it's because she actually drank like coconut water and somehow that has a lot of protein. Um, no omega 6s, low on the same things, just like always. In this video, she gets almost 1700 calories, low in choline, low in vitamin E, low in calcium iron, selenium, sodium, zinc, <laughs> and omega-6s and omega-3s and many amino acids. This one, she's at 1,200 calories, low in the same stuff, choline and vitamin E, like always, low in all the amino acids, low in omega-6s, low in calcium, iron, selenium, sodium, zinc. I mean, I probably don't have to read all these off. I might just flash them up on the screen for the next few because she just eats kind of a similar way. So those are the first 12 of 15 that I went through. She's pretty much on and off raw vegan throughout a lot of this time, and that's going up to just a year ago. And so the last three, she hasn't posted as many what I eat in a day videos, and some of them were kind of hard to go through because she would like go out to eat and I just didn't know what the food was, so I kind of had to skip a few of them. Um, but even her diet now, when it's cooked, this was posted a year ago, what I ate today, my guilty pleasure. She eats a pretty high raw or completely raw in this video even. She's starting to eat more high fat now though. In the 14th one, she talks about her weight loss. So I've been dealing with mold allergies for over a year now. Um, and I've just like had a really low appetite. And I guess I'm not honestly sure how much of my weight loss comes from or has come from my loss of appetite versus intuitive eating. Which she never talked about and I remember seeing so many videos where people would defend how little she's eating saying, oh she's just a small person, like she doesn't need that much food. And it's like, no, if you're 23, 24 years old, you probably need to eat more than 1200 calories. The reason she wasn't doing it has largely to do with the fact that she had no appetite due to having mold illness, which she just never talked about in her What I Eat A Day videos. She never shared that that's why she ate so little, and I don't think she realized that it was a problem. So now she's eating a lot more high fat, like 
very high fat and she's getting enough vitamin E now still low on choline a little bit on B1 calcium iron selenium sodium zinc low the, the zinc wasn't too low but it looks like her amino acids are quite low and for whatever reason I did not take a screenshot of her fats but I'm actually gonna guess that she's pretty good on them since she's eating a higher fat diet so we'll give her the benefit of the doubt on that one and then lastly her most recent what I eat today video full day of eating plant-based this is all that she eats it's um, her guacamole cracker that's it diet lettuce <laughs> she eats 1500 calories still low on choline still low on the selenium and the sodium not too bad on zinc um, very low on the proteins omega-6s are still a bit low so yeah, as you can see, especially from her first many What I Eat Today videos, she's not getting enough calories and she's not getting enough nutrients. And it's just, when you do that for a long period of time, there's going to be consequences. She said, like, basically, I was deficient in everything. And like, no shit you're not eating. But in between these videos that are like, oh, I'm having such a, a hard time with my health, she's selling ebooks. And it's the same thing with Ravana, selling meal plans, doing meal prep videos, doing what I eat in a day videos, slinging mushroom elixirs and other biohacking things, taking the CBD oil and saying, oh gosh, I haven't been feeling well for so long until now so overall i'm not trying to say that these are all like terrible people i mean some are a bit more genuine than others and a little bit less money hungry than others um, but what's important is that these people all had a large influence on the way that many people chose to eat or currently choose to eat. They promoted restrictive diets likely out of naivety, they followed people like Doug Graham and Freely the Banana Girl, and then thousands of people followed them and looked up to them and listened to them regurgitate what they had heard Doug and Freely say. I was the same way a couple years ago, I just listened to what people said, I listened to what Freely said and I thought because she was skinny and she seemed to be healthy she must know what she's talking about. It is crystal clear to me what sells and what attracts viewers. Look at the biggest channels. What is it? It's a skinny girl who is the closest thing to perfect that you could imagine. Perfect makeup, perfect hair, perfect lighting, perfect meal prep, perfect meal plan. And you know these diets likely made them feel good for a while, especially people coming from even worse eating habits in their past. Problems they did experience like acne and bloating and losing their period, they ignored them because they thought it was either detox or that it was just completely normal. And some of them continued to promote their diet as healthy because they truly thought it was and others I really think did it because they wanted to continue making money off of it and didn't want to admit to people that they were not actually eating a healthy diet, especially when that's how they made money, selling programs to people, selling ebooks to people. And a lot of these girls, YouTubers are big in their lives. I grew up with YouTubers being big in my life. Oftentimes it felt like the only source of a connection to someone who, who you know, like got me. And it makes me so sick to my stomach when I see the diet plans that are recommended to these kids and the products that are hawked on them, acting like, oh, this is the key to good health. This is the key to achieving the life of your dreams. When someone is greatly profiting off of you, trusting them or wanting to be like them, you know, making tens of thousands of dollars off of selling you programs or ebooks. People lie and people mislead. And when there's a money incentive involved, people are much more likely to lie and mislead. I think the fact that many of these people have tons of old What I Ate in a Day videos still up showing them eating a thousand calories is very telling of the fact that they either don't realize how healthy their diet used to be, which doesn't make sense to me because obviously they're experiencing health problems and changing their diet, or they just don't care because they're still continuing to make money off of those videos. Not only have they suffered health consequences of their poor decisions, but they're also, many of them being told by thousands of people, honey, it's not veganism, it's your extremely restrictive eating patterns in the past that are causing this. And when you're someone like Elise from Alignment and people have been saying that for years, I'm pretty sure she's seen the comments from people. So like she has to get it, but 
I don't know why she does and I don't know why they in general don't. But we can all be doing more to make sure that we're eating a healthy, nutritionally adequate diet. And that doesn't mean a more pure diet. That doesn't mean a more cleansing diet. That means researching past like alt-med <laughs> family blogs. That means seeing a nutritionist if we're able to and getting our blood checked. That means logging and tracking our food into apps like Chronometer. I think you can do that on MyFitnessPal as well. And making sure you're consistently getting enough of all your nutrients. That means supplementing for things that you're not getting. If you're vegan, you should be supplementing for B12. And if you are somebody who struggles to absorb a certain vitamin or nutrient, you should be supplementing for that. Pay attention to the way you feel after eating certain foods. If you're feeling bloated after eating high carb, low fat meals, then don't eat high carb, low fat. But also that doesn't mean you have to go from that to just eating salmon. You can also try just eating a healthy, balanced vegan diet, not trying to be high fat, high protein, high carb, high this, low that. It doesn't have to be from one extreme to another. You can just try to eat in the middle. Like I said earlier, I really do think these people no longer being vegan is a good thing in so many ways. If tons of people are following their advice of how to eat, there are likely going to be a lot of people ending up with similar results and then going back to eating animal products. But you know, surprisingly enough, a lot of these people in these videos don't really say bad stuff about veganism. Like a lot of people are like, I wish I could be vegan or I'm so happy for people who are vegan or veganism didn't cause my problems. I'm so grateful for the vegan journey. One of the biggest things I got through my life as a vegan was discovery of self-love or deeper self-love. I do not blame the vegan diet for my issues. And I think it's important to acknowledge that I had these issues before going vegan. Veganism enhanced and in a way saved my life in, in so many different aspects. I have loads and loads of vegan friends. They love it, their body thrives off it, they're happy and healthy, they look amazing, feel amazing, and I'm genuinely so stoked for them that they found a style of eating that works and is maintainable for them. I'm more than jealous of the majority who can live a problem-free, prosperous, healthy vegan lifestyle without any health issues. If you are a vegan, I am totally here to support you. Veganism did not cause my problems. I'll never put the blame on veganism for that. I had underlying gut issues, but eating a high fiber diet may have been making my problems worse over time or at least not allowing them to heal. I do not regret going vegan. I Veganism still was the best decision I made. If you're going to go vegan, if you want to do it, I think you should do it. I think it's a really cool experience. Veganism is such a healthy, healthy lifestyle and it does nothing but benefit you, the animals, the environment. I just want to say how much I stand for the plant-based diet and for veganism. I believe it because I felt it. If we want veganism to grow, it's the people promoting a healthy, balanced, well-planned vegan diet that are going to have the best impact. Showing people how to do it healthfully and sustainably is way better than someone showing that eating only guacamole, crackers, and lettuce is what a healthy vegan diet can look like. So today I'm going to share with you my personal story of how I got a UTI and how I cured it naturally. And I just want to share with you guys my journey, um, my health journey. This is just a diary, like this YouTube thing. This is just my journey. I'm not saying that like this is right or wrong or this is what you should do. I'm just sharing my journey. So I hope that the information I share with you today is going to be applied by many, many people who are watching this video. And there are plenty of vegan influencers out there who eat more than just three foods. People who actually have credentials or who do research and don't just listen to somebody who they did a fasting retreat with from that people have almost died from. People who can admit when they're wrong. People who don't jump from one extreme to another or one trend to another. People who don't have a need for purity and feel like they need to be cleansed every other month. To name a few, 
Goji Man, Mike the Vegan, Crazy Healthy Cool, Pickup Limes, Unnatural Vegan, Lily Koi Hawaii. And that doesn't mean you should never question these people or that they're right all the time. You should always question what you're hearing. You don't just take people's word for things because you think they know what they're talking about. And I think that's one of the main lessons we should learn from this situation. If you want to get a better idea, not the entire picture because just tracking your vitamins and nutrients is not the entire picture, but if you want to get a better idea, I totally recommend using the website Chronometer, especially if you can't afford to like go get your blood work done. It's free, so just go in there. Um, unless you have a background of like unhealthy calorie counting or anything like that, I think it can be a really great thing to do every once in a while, you know, Put in what you eat, see if you're consistently low in anything, and if you are, find foods to incorporate into your diet that are high in those things so that you're not low or take a supplement. But I know I personally have learned so much from this situation. I mean, I've never gotten my blood work done in my life, and I really should. I I hopefully will do that next month, um, but I think more people should be doing this. We should really, if we wanna eat healthy, if we, <laughs> don't want to experience health problems like these other people are doing, even if we've never eaten super unhealthy restrictive diets, it's never a bad idea to get your blood work done just to make sure that things are all good. So let me know your thoughts on this topic. Let me know if you've ever um, been on one of these like super extreme restrictive um, diets and how they went for you. Please remember not to be hateful. That's not good for veganism. Never has been. You can't shame people into changing how they think. You can't pretend like if you're not vegan, you're a terrible person. If you are vegan, you're just living the most ethical life you can. Just remember, nothing is that black and white. Let that sink in.